What's up, Beta Nation? A welcome to Dapp Central, your home for everything blockchain and crypto. My name's Fareed. Super quick update here when it comes to the brand new Cardano node version that's been released and governance. So without any further ado, let's jump on in here. As always, if you enjoy content like this, make sure to smash that thumbs up on the way in. If it's your first time stopping by, consider subscribing. And if you have any questions, leave those down below. Now, I've broken this down in my last video, but I want to go ahead and just briefly reiterate. We have Cardano node version 10.1.1 officially released right now it's still working its way up um, once we do get to sort of where the community is ready to roll we're gonna have to go through the same exact process that we did with chain hard fork number one where we have to make sure that from an spo perspective the majority of stake pool operators have upgraded but then with respect to centralized exchanges and the amount of liquidity that they hold again just dealing with ada we'll have to make sure that the majority of those have also upgraded as well. Now, one thing to definitely keep in mind here that I mentioned in my last update is the fact that with respect to staking rewards, right now you can claim them at any time without necessarily having to participate or delegate to a DRAP. But after the version 10.1.1 takes effect on the mainnet, you will have to delegate to a DRAP a Plutus V3 script or take advantage of one of the auto DREPs right, which either votes automatically for no or automatically chooses to abstain in order to actually um, claim your staking rewards. So right now, up until this version goes live, you can do as you wish. You can claim your ADA rewards um, basically at any time. But after this hard fork takes effect, you will have to um, be participating or at least have delegated to a DREP before you can claim your ADA staking rewards. And the core reason why this is being done is just solely for participation reasons, excuse me, where we still need more people to um, either, again, register themselves as a DREP or delegate to a DREP. That way we can make sure that as much ADA is available as possible is being used towards voting and governance. So I wanted to at least open up with that. Now, focusing more or less on the actual governance itself, this is the one-stop shop platform that you want to be on. It's gov.tools. And this is now live for the Cardano mainnet. So Cardano governance tools basically breaks down everything that you need to know. It highlights delegating your voting power, becoming a DREP, becoming a direct voter. And then obviously gives you the ability to also view all of the different governance actions and proposals that are currently being discussed amongst the community. Now, another question that I've gotten is whether or not I'll be a DREP. As it currently stands, I don't have any plans in the short term on becoming a DREP. And the reason why is because I want to really focus on being a creator. I want to focus on creating content and providing value in that particular sense. Now, it's nothing against, you know, Cardano and governance. I'm heavily involved here in the ecosystem. But as a stake pool operator, I'm not necessarily sure whether I'm going to have conflicts of interest and also the amount of time that it's going to take for me to do my job well as a DREP. So right now, I'm just going to be a direct voter, only voting with my own personal ADA. But as things mature and as I'm able to sort of better get an understanding or get a better understanding of governance here on Cardano, I'll, I'll revisit that particular choice at a later time. Now, from here, you've got the DREP directory where, again, you can filter or sort. Um, but very quickly, you can get an idea or sense of who is who and what they basically stand for. So again, you can definitely come in here, take a look. If you want more details about a particular DREP, they have an additional page here with some of their objectives, some of their motivations, qualifications, and then particularly, or if they want a payment address there. So again, this is a question that I've received a lot. People have been saying, hey, Freed, you're not a DREP. Who else can I actually um, delegate to? If you head over to gov.tools, there's this DREP directory that you can go ahead and use in order to get more familiar with your options for governance. Moving over, we have the proposals tab here, where if you're not aware, you can actually go ahead and jump in and see all of the active um, proposals before they're actually submitted on chain as governance actions. So what I would basically call this is sort of the temp check before it's actually brought on chain. And so as you guys can see, we have HM Labs um, submitting a proposal asking if the K parameter should be increased. We've got additional conversations going on about the annual Cardano budget, enhancing the um, governance process. And if I just click show all here, you're going to see that there's a lot more of these proposals and conversations actively going on. So if you want to stay in tune as to what's going to be coming up, this is the this is the position or this is the place that you want to be at. Now, moving over to the actual governance actions tab here, 
we can actually see all of the currently proposed or active governance proposals. Now we have one within the protocol parameter changes section, which there's data missing, but this is around the Plutus cost model. And I'll highlight that here in just a moment. And then again, we have whether or not K should be increased, which is just an informational action. So nothing's actually going to happen here. This is just more or less to get a temp check from the community. It'll still be written on chain the results, but it won't actually have an effect. So I do want to be clear about that. So at the very bottom there, you can see when it was submitted, when it actually expires, and then the governance action ID associated with that particular proposal. So jumping into one here, this is whether or not K should be increased. Again, it's just an informational proposal. On the right hand side here, you have the D reps, how they basically voted yes, abstain or no. Again, keep in mind that there is an auto abstain D rep. And I believe there's also an auto no D rep as well. And so those are some of the values there. One thing that would be great here for visibility would be commas to better sort of or quickly um, understand the actual values here. But it looks like from a um, voting perspective here, the majority of D reps voting no, and then an either, even bigger amount, excuse me, voting to abstain, and then 100,000 ADA going towards voting for yes. To basically sum this up, if you're not aware of what K is, it's basically the value or the um, parameter that manages what dictates a fully saturated pool. Right now, I believe K is currently set to 500. And given that particular value as it stands, you're able to basically gain as much delegation as nearly, I want to say 70,000, or excuse me, 70 million ADA before pool is saturated. And so if we were to increase the K value, for example, to 1,000, that would then that would then mean that all of the current stake pools would basically have to reduce the amount of stake in each pool in order to not be saturated. Basically meaning that this is going to force people to decentralize Cardano even further. Now, if you're an SPO and you have a pool that's basically already saturated, increasing K would basically be a negative factor or a negative for you because you're now basically going to have to be spreading out that delegation and maybe now it only takes 30 or 35 million ADA in order for you to have a fully saturated or a fully um, used up pool. And so that's one thing to keep in mind here. In terms of SPOs, we can see how they voted and then the constitutional committee, they'll have an opportunity to vote here as well. Um, again, and just confirming here, K is currently set at 500. And again, that means that pools can gain as much delegation as 74 million. However, if we double K, right, then you could imagine that around 37 or so million would be the max value that could be delegated towards a particular pool before it's technically considered as fully saturated. And once it is fully saturated, you do begin to lose rewards on that particular front, therefore uh, making delegators wanting to move out. So this, I think, benefits smaller pools. It benefits Cardano's overall decentralization, but you could imagine that pools that are already nearly saturated, they'll be taking a hit or potentially taking a loss. The next uh, action that we have here basically states that data is missing. But again, this is touching on the Plutus cost model. There's a lot of things going on in the background. So I want to take an opportunity just to briefly highlight here that there's four possible errors here within this particular platform or the GovTools platform. Number one is data missing what we have on the other platform or within the other proposal here. Again, data missing here. And then there's data not verifiable, informatted um, or improperly formatted data, and then data that's not verifiable. Again, I'm not going to break down all the nuance here. You guys can definitely read that for yourselves, but I want to quickly highlight that bit there. Now, just because of the fact that I know what this is, is about, I want to briefly highlight that. So this is dealing or touching on the Plutus cost model. And for anybody who isn't aware, the Plutus cost model in Cardano is basically a system that's used for calculating the computational and storage costs of executing Plutus scripts or smart contracts. It assigns a cost to various operations within a particular script, allowing for accurate prediction and fair pricing of script execution. And this particular model is crucial for preventing a DOS or denial of service attack. And it also ensures efficient use of network resources. Um, taking a brief break here, this actually ties straight back to the DOS attack that we saw not too long ago where somebody realized that there was basically no cost for a particular type of action, and they began to spam that particular action, slowing down or basically filling up all of the blocks on the Cardano network with a bunch of junk, 
preventing real transactions in real data from coming through. So hopefully you guys can sort of see the benefit in the importance of the actual Plutus cost model. But jumping back into the GovTools platform, this particular proposal was to change the cost model. So again, we have the yes count, the abstain and the nose, and then we've got the SPOs in the constitutional committee here. Hopefully they're able to get this cleaned up, but I want to briefly bring this to your attention. Again, touching on the Cardano node version and the two active proposals that we have right now, one being an informational proposal and one being a proposed protocol parameter change. As we get ready to close out here, shout out to Darlington and the Lido team. They were just at the recent Cardano summit, but another secondhand resource is 1694.io. From here, you can get all of the information that you need about Cardano governance. So we've got this abstract here talking about governance actions and voting, why the decentralization framework is needed for Cardano, hard forks, shortcomings, the different types of conversations, the different DREPs are also even listed here. We've got different specifications, talks about the different committees, um, states of no confidence, the committee keys, basically everything that you need to know is also captured here on 1694. But that'll do it here for this particular video. Wanted to highlight the brand new um, Cardano node version that's been released, taking us into Chang Hard Fork number two, how you guys can get access to DREPs, figure out who to delegate to, and then of course, review any of the ongoing Cardano governance proposals. That'll do it here for this particular update. If you found this news piece to be helpful, I would appreciate you if you could smash that thumbs up. If it's your first time stopping by and you want more content like this, breaking down everything in Cardano, consider subscribing to DAP Central. And last but not least, if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, leave those down below. That said, and as always, I'll see you guys in the next video.